Hi everyone, I want to talk to you about a new study just published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute looking at optimal dosages of GnRH agonists, Lupron or Zolodex, for patients with premenopausal hormone receptor positive breast cancer. Now for some of our premenopausal patients with hormone receptor positive breast cancer, we will do tamoxifen alone, we will do tamoxifen with ovarian function suppression, or we will do an aromatase inhibitor with ovarian function suppression. And I have videos if you go back on why we do that and why ovarian suppression is indicated. Ovarian suppression can be done one of two ways. We can either surgically remove the ovaries. We don't recommend that typically in people younger than 45. Um, and the other way to do it is chemical menopause, which is through drugs like Lupron or Zolidex, which think of these as essentially a switch to turn off the ovaries temporarily. And Lupron and Zolidex can be given either every four weeks, monthly, or every 12 weeks. And there's been a lot of debate about what the right dose is. Now with tamoxifen, we feel very comfortable giving these drugs every 12 weeks because tamoxifen doesn't require you to be fully in menopause to be effective. Aromatase inhibitors do require you to be fully in menopause to be effective because the way that they work is they block estrogen production everywhere but the ovary. So if your ovary is making any estrogen, that is going to make the aromatase inhibitors less effective. And it's also going to, your body's going to sense that there's less estrogen from these AIs. And it's gonna tell your ovary, hey, make more estrogen, which is counterproductive. And so as a result of that, there's been hesitancy about giving the Lupron or the Zolidex every 12 weeks instead of every four weeks because of a concern that there can be some estrogen escape or incomplete ovarian suppression with that longer dose. So that brings us to this study. Uh, this study was a retrospective study, meaning they went back and looked at what people did. It's a study based out of China, and they had 950 patients, which is a large number of patients. And they looked and saw, you know, out of the people who got one month uh, Lupron or Zolodex on a one month schedule versus a three month schedule, was there any difference in outcome? And so what did they find? They found that there was no difference in the rate of estrogen inhibition. They found there was no difference in the rate of incomplete ovarian suppression between the two groups. And they also found that there was no difference in outcomes. There was no impact on survival or risk of recurrence. Now, they only followed these patients for about four years, so it's hard to draw big conclusions here because, um, you know, we know that th this patient population can recur you know, years later, but it's very promising. So this is great news, but there are some caveats to the study that we want to keep in mind. And the biggest caveat is that they used a higher estrogen cutoff to determine ovarian suppression than what we currently and typically do. So they used the cutoff of if you were, if your estradiol level was less than 30, they considered people to be in menopause. And the text and soft trials that really established ovarian function suppression as a standard of care used a much lower estrogen cutoff Cut off. Now, so they went back and looked and saw, okay, well, if we use a lower estrogen cutoff to see if someone's in menopause, what happens? And they found that in that case, you know, there was a little bit more of incomplete ovarian suppression in people on the three-month dose, but it didn't translate to an impact in survival or recurrence. But again, it's a shorter-term follow-up. So how do we put all this in perspective? You know, getting Lupron or Zolidex every month is a lot. It is time intensive, it is costly, it really is a burden on someone and it creates a lot of barriers. So a lot of people cannot come in monthly. And so this I think is a conversation and it's an option for patients. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to transition everyone to three month Lupron or Zolidex for people on aromatase inhibitors, but I think it adds to the body of literature that we have and can support it. And lastly, I will say then they point this out is that the population, you know, it's a study from China, so it's a little bit of a different population. They had lower BMI levels than what we typically see in the United States, and that can play a role as well, potentially, we don't know. So again, I think it's gonna be hard to extrapolate you know, this study and make it the standard of care, but I think it adds to information that we really need to have. I'd love to know your questions, your thoughts, let me know.